Hi folks. Well, it is module 14 and uh, this week is all about cosmology. Cosmology is the evolution of the universe. Um, how did it begin? How is it changing? How will it end? Fascinating, cool, wonderful, wonderful stuff. So let's take a look at what we're going to go through. We're going to define cosmology. We're going to talk about the cosmologic principle. We get to talk about some weird and wacky stuff like dark matter and dark energy. Um, why is space dark? Uh, we get to talk about Hubble's law and Hubble's law is used to determine how old the universe is. And we are going to use that in our lab this week. So I'm going to vault right over to our lab and let's talk a little about the fact that this will be our last lab. Yeah, our last lab, except for the observing project. The observing project is due next week. And this is going to be our last actual astronomy lab. Now, um, for this last astronomy lab, let me give you a preamble here. I wanted this to be very much like a real astronomy lab. Um, some of you are going to go, oh, goody. And some of you are going to go, oh, no, because it is, there's more math. There's more data to manipulate. The math is simple. You have to do some division. Uh, you can handle division on a calculator. I have faith in you. I walk you through the math. I'm going to, in the video, give you lots of hints and tricks. But I want to show you also that the numbers that astronomers come up with, they don't just pull out of their ears. Um, this is based on real data and lots of good information that is real. Um, we are going to do a tiny little version of it here, but I want to give you a taste of what it's like. So that's what we're up to. The goal in the lab today is to come up with the age of the universe. Um, tiny baby version of it, but show you the process. And I think that's kind of cool. So here's what's up. Um, this is Hubble's law. This is Hubble's constant. We're going to use this equation throughout the lab. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is create an analogy. I want you to understand the process of how Hubble's law can be used to come up with the age of the universe. So to do this, you are going to need either a balloon or a piece of elastic. If you do not have balloons around your home with some stickers, um, then elastic, and you may not have elastic, but I'm sure you have an elastic waistband. You might have an elastic waistband on a piece, a pair of gym shorts or a, a piece of undergarment or something like that. And you're going to have label one of them as a, a star, another star kind of close as B and another star further away as C. And what you're going to do is measure the distance from A to B, and then you're going to measure the distance from A to C and record that. Then for five seconds, you are going to expand this. So if it's a balloon, you're going to blow it up to make it bigger slowly over five seconds. If it's elastic, you're going to stretch it gently over five seconds. After that five seconds, measure the change in distance from A to B, or, or measure the new distance A to B, and then measure the new distance A to C. New distance A to B, new distance A to C, and record all of that here. You want the change in distance. This minus that will give you that change in distance. You're going to take that change in distance divided by the five seconds, and it's going to give you the velocity at which your elastic balloon universe is expanding. To find the Hubble's constant for our elastic balloon universe, take this velocity, divide it, it, divide it by that change in distance, and that is going to give you the Hubble's constant for our universe. To come up with the age of the universe, take one over Hubble's constant. Now this is kind of how this is how it works and I wanted to give you an elastic version of it now we're going to do the same math but we're going to do it with real star data so hang on to your cosmic hats here goes we're going to begin with some real spectra of real galaxies this is NGC 2903 this is NGC 1832 this line, which is on every single image, is the hydrogen alpha line. This is a dominant spectral line on every galactic image. And this is where it should be located, right here, right here, if these galaxies were not in motion. But because the universe is expanding, the hydrogen alpha line is shifted. 
and it is shifted over a little or it is shifted over more depending upon the rate of speed of these galaxies. So to start with, I want you to take a pencil and drop a line straight down from each one of these peaks. Where that line intersects this axis, I want you to read what that number is off that axis and read it to three digits if you could. So this one is 6,600 and something. Give me that something, okay? And you're gonna do that for all six of those and record them right here. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is calculate the Z number or the redshift of each one of these galaxies. And this is how you do it. It is the observed wavelength, which was this, the observed wavelength, minus the at rest wavelength for the hydrogen alpha line. And that is 65, 62.8 angstroms. So take your observed wavelength minus this, hit enter on your calculator, then hit divide by, and then you're gonna divide by 65, 62.8. What you get goes as the Z number. Then you're gonna take your next wavelength observed minus rest divided by rest, and that's going to be your next Z number. And you're going to repeat, 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 repeat till you have this all filled in. Show me one example calculation here so I knew you knew what you're doing. Please don't round off too much. If you get in your calculator a number like this, do not round off to 0 0.008. No, 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 no. We need all these lovely precious digits. These zeros out here are just placeholders, so give me at least one, two, three real honest to goodness numbers. Next, we're going to calculate the speed of the galaxy. How fast is it moving away from us? To do that, you're going to take the Z number you just calculated and, and multiplied by C, the speed of light in kilometers per second. So three times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second. So take this number whoop, times three times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second, plop it in here. Take the number you got here times three times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second, boop, plop it in here. And you're gonna do that multiplication over and over and over for every piece of data. And you're gonna plop those velocities in right there. Next, we're going to figure out how far away the galaxies are. Now, this page is all an analogy of how we use standard rods in astronomy. And I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm using the analogy of trees. I'm going to let you read through this and do this on your own. But it's real important for you to understand how to use this. For the standard bar that we're going to use, we're going to use this right here. So take a centimeter ruler, measure the length of that, and record that here. That's going to be our standard bar or our standard rod. Then take your centimeter ruler, and these are actual pictures of galaxies, and measure the width of the galaxy from the widest point to the widest point. Then pick another galaxy, widest point to widest point. And you guess, you make the best judgment, widest point to widest point, okay? And record that in centimeters right there. Then we have to determine the diameter of the galaxy because centimeters is a crummy diameter of galaxies. Galaxies are not a couple centimeters away. So we have to convert that into another unit. To do that, we're gonna take the diameter that you measured in centimeters, divide that by the standard bar number from up here, and that goes, that goes right here. We then have to get that in the right unit so we can calculate Hubble's constant. How do you do that? Take this number and divide that into 22. So take 22 divided by that number and that gives you distance in megaparsecs. Take this number divided by 22, put it there. This number divided by 22, put it right there and keep going. We're almost there. Trust me, we're almost there. I know some of you are going, so much math, hang on. We're, this is the last lab and this is a real sciencey one. Now, this page is all about getting all your data in one place before you graph. So the distances in megaparsecs, there are a few blank spots. What are the blank spots? Well, that is the information from right here. So take this information, copy it, and put it next to the right galaxies here. There are some blank spots under velocities. Where do you find that? 
you go back in the lab to the section that's labeled velocity right here and you take that information and you plop it in the next to the right galaxy here now now that we have distances and velocities of all of these lovely galaxies what you're going to do is you're going to make a graph a graph of the velocity of galaxies and how far away they are when you plot these all you need is a dot for each one of the galaxies please plot all of them on the graph if you know how to graph on excel or something like that you're welcome to use that but please insert the graph with your lab you do need to have this graph as part of your lab report after you have done that I want you to draw a line of best fit. What's a line of best fit? It does not mean a straight line up through 45 degrees. No, 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 no. Line of best fit means that you lay a ruler here and you want about the same number of dots above and below where you're going to draw your line. So estimate the best place to draw that line and it might be here and it might be there. And when you think you got the right spot, lay it down, draw that straight your best straight line the next thing we're going to do is we have to read the slope of that line and to make it easy for you we're going to use 0 and 60 megaparsecs as where we're going to read that slope so how i'm going to ask you to do that is to keep the math a little easier for you wherever you've drawn that line follow 60 megaparsecs up to your line go over to the velocity axis and read that number. Each one of these little little hash marks is a is 100, so 3100, 3200, da 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 up and up. Read that number, put it here, divide that number by 60 and that's your Hubble constant for all of the data that we have just gotten. If you get a number somewhere between 40 and 100, it's a keeper. If you get a number that is way different than that, oh boy, howdy, honey, I'm sorry, you made a big boo-boo. So hopefully it's somewhere in there. Take this number in this box, multiply it by 3.16 times 10 to the 7th. You're going to need a scientific calculator, something that can handle lots of digits. If you don't have one, you can find one online. Just search scientific calculator online. Trust me, one will pop up. Take those, take that answer there. Then, once you get that answer, that answer divided by 3.09 times 10 to the 19th, and put that answer there. We're working on getting things in the right units. Then take one divided by this number, whoop, and that's gonna be the age of the universe. Now, hopefully, if everything went well, you'll have a number times 10 to the 10th. Well, usually we report the age of the universe in billions, so that's 10 to the 9th. So for example, if you get an answer 1.88 times 10 to the 10th, slide the decimal over 1, and it would be 18.8 .8 billion years. Hopefully you're going to be closer than that because the true value is closer to 13.75. Last bit of math, do a percent error calculation, 13.75 minus whatever you got, hit enter, divide by 13.75 times 100, and a percent error. And answer this last question because I think it's an interesting one. Have fun calculating the age of the universe. I think it's pretty amazing that we can do it, that we as a species can do this. It takes a lot of science, a lot of observations, a lot of very smart people, lifetimes worth of work, so that you and I in the, pro in the joy of our own little homes have a chance of doing this. So have a good one. As always, please ask me questions when they come up and we'll talk soon.